Hello, let's create a custom helper. By the way, my name is Rich Finelli, and this is the 10th video in my Handlebars video training series. And by the way, every video in this series is available on YouTube completely for free. If you like this video, please check out my website, richfinelli.com, for more great web development videos. In this video, we'll start learning about custom helpers. There's two types of custom helpers, expressions and block. To learn the difference, let's look at the difference between basic expression tags and basic block tags. Expressions are tags we use to pull in data. What's inside the expression is evaluated from our data. So some examples are name, location, and house.seat. These aren't custom expression helpers. These are just expression tags. Blocks, each, if, and with are all examples of built-in block helpers and handlebars. These are built-in helpers. We can make our own custom helpers to format data or basically do anything else we want that we can do with JavaScript. In this video, we'll learn about custom expression helpers. Okay, helpers are always first registered in your JavaScript file. So we use handlebars dot register helper. It takes two arguments, the name of your custom helper as a string and a callback function. So we'll call it whatever we want because this is what we're naming our custom helper. And then the second parameter is your callback function. So we'll say function. And this is where the meat and potatoes of our helper will be written. So handlebar helpers always return a string so we can just say for fun return you know this is my string and that does nothing by itself what we have to do is we have to go and use this name and we have to go add it to our handlebars template so we're just gonna say format name easy as that and when we go to the browser and we refresh it this is just a static string. It doesn't really do anything useful, but that's just the beginning. So we can go back to our JavaScript, and now we could say, uh, we can go to our callback function. We could say, okay, the callback function takes um, a, a number of arguments. Um, we'll give it one, and we'll call it property, because the argument is usually a property from your, from your data. So we can take any one of these properties here, and we can add that. So we'll say property, and then we'll just say, uh, let's change this to, hello, my name is plus property. Now, that will bomb out unless we update our, our helper to give it a property. So we'll use the name property. So we could be, we could use name, we could use location, anything that's in context. Anything that we can put in a regular uh, a basic expression tag, we can put in our custom expression helper. So we'll say name. And now we can see, hello, my name is John Snow. So now we can do something like, hello, my name is John Snow. And I live at you know, house.seat. And it blows up because we need to add another property. Property one. So we'll update the first property, property one, and the second property we'll call property two. And uh, house.seat, that's totally, this was. Wow, I was way ahead of myself there. So we'll say property two, property one. So we want the first argument to appear here and the second argument to appear here. And we will go to our HTML. And this is the first argument name. The second argument will be house.c. So we can pass as many properties that are in context to this expression helper. And now when we refresh, we can say, hello, my name is John Snow, and I live at Winterfell. So that works pretty good. 
Now, what if we want to do something like this? We just kind of want to add some HTML here. I want to surround each of the of the, the important things with strong tags. So what's going to happen is we are actually going to get the HTML. According to the handlebars documentation, when returning HTML from a helper, you should return a handlebars safe string if you don't want it to be escaped by default. There's a special method that we can use to make sure that handlebars doesn't automatically escape our HTML. So what we can say is return new, we use the keyword new, handlebars.safe string. And we'll close that too. And uh, we don't want to put the semicolon anymore. And now we can see it's no longer escaping our HTML because we used handlebars safe string. So that works out pretty good. Now let's say we update our our JSON file to have to add a phone number for each house because hey we might want to give Jon Snow a ring at Winterfell. But when this data is coming in however we're getting it it's not really formatted to look pretty on a website. It's just you know 10 numbers there. So we can create a helper to format that data. That's what helpers are really for. It's you know a big advantage of them. And we'll call it whatever we want, so it makes sense to call it format phone number. And we'll pass it a property argument. And I don't have to use the word, you know, this is a function, so I, the argument can be whatever name I want. I'm calling it property because I think that makes sense because that's your, you know, that's what you're operating on. But I could certainly call it, you know, phone if I wanted to or phone number. So we'll do var uh, phone number, or we'll call it phone, equals property dot to string. The to string method just allows us to turn an object into a string. So what we want to do is we want to kind of add the parentheses around the first three digits of the phone number, and we want to add that dash after the um, the second three digits to make it look like a phone number. So we can say return and then add the first parentheses and then just say phone dot substring and then the substring method just allows us to first specify okay what is our starting and then from the starting how many digits or how many characters, I should say. So we're starting with the, the first zero, um, and we're from the zero, one, two, so the first three. And then we'll add the closing parentheses, and then we'll do phone.substring, and now starting with the, the fourth character, we'll do the next three. And then we'll use the dash. And then finally, we'll do phone.substring and then 6, 4. And we're formatting that phone number. So now what we need to do is we need to go over to our index.html file and we need to add that helper. So we'll put this one in the side of a paragraph tag and format phone number and then we'll do house.phone and we'll refresh that in the browser and it blows up so uh, not surprised I made a mistake here so let's just see what handlebars points us to oh of course I capitalize the the second S that should be lowercase. There is no such method as sub capital S T R. It's all lowercase. So now when I refresh the browser and I take a look at it, the phone number is formatted to look like a phone number. Nice. Uh, here's another problem that you may have, right? 
So what if we don't have a phone number for somebody? You know, that's going to return false. So now what's going to happen is we're going to get an error. Um, and basically it's saying, okay, cannot read property to string of undefined. So, you know, it it's saying, okay, well, you're saying read to string of property, but for one of those for one of those items in the array, there is no phone number. So it's trying to find it. You can't find it, and it's blowing up. So that's easily solved. We can go back to our helper, and we can write any JavaScript we want in here. So we'll just do a simple if statement, if property. So basically, if this property that's here results as true, we're going to execute this JavaScript. If not, then skip it. And there we go. So now we get our phone number for Jon Snow, but for Tyrion, who doesn't have a phone number, we will not see a phone number for him. So that is what we can do with a Handlebars custom expression helper. In the next video, we'll explore custom block helpers and see how they can help us.